consciousness. It's a really popular buzzword these days and I thought I would create a video for you because I promised a friend that I would help her be able to develop a more prosperous lifestyle and to create more of the experiences that she wants to create in her life. And why not? We'll put it into a video for you. You can use it in your life and hopefully it'll help you make the changes that you wanna make. So before we get started, please hit the subscribe button. That's really important because it tells YouTube that you're interested in my content. And if you hit the bell, then you'll get a little notification whenever I upload new fresh content and you'll be the first to the table. So thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing and liking and sharing and definitely comment. I would like to know where are you at in your journey of consciousness and how is that turning out in your life? What kind of results are you getting? What kind of changes do you see happening? And what is it that you would like to create beyond what you currently know? My favorite question is, now what? So imagine just constantly asking yourself after every achievement, now what? What's next? What should we go and create next? What's our next adventure? So let me get into this content and I'm going to share a little bit more about my journey. And I did in my last video express some of the challenges I had when I was a kid and growing up and you know, the, the mentality and, and just kind of like the lack of love and nurturing and bonding in our family unit. But what I did with that is phenomenal. I made gallons and gallons, an infinite supply of lemonade out of some lemons. And it continues to feed me and nourish me and fulfill me to this day. So I'm really passionate about this topic. I, I can't really say enough about it. And I do like to kind of interchange the words. So my favorite way of explaining or describing consciousness is, you know, using that term self-aware. It's, it's like, you know, we have these blind spots as people, as human beings. You know, you don't know what you don't know, so to speak. And when we have blind spots, that's why we struggle. And that's why we suffer. And then to try to make sense of it, then we will give it these weird kind of explanations and justifications because after all, why would we make ourselves suffer, right? We wouldn't do that. But what if you're doing it unconsciously? What if you're making yourself suffer, making your life challenging and hard because you don't know what you don't know? So my friend has really worked hard all of her life. I remember knowing her when we were both in our 20s and she was probably one of the most hardworking people that I've ever met with a huge heart, just a genuinely kind, fun person, but has really sacrificed a lot in her life. And I think she's at this age now where she really wants to make a shift. And I'm curious if that's something that you have in common with her. Are you at a stage in your life where you would really like to have a different kind of experience? I have had those moments several times over the course of my life. And it's actually turned into these amazing, it's like an impetus, an impetus for change these amazing kind of crossroads where I really took a deep look within and said, hey, you know, the way things are is not the way I want to live the rest of my life. And I do want to change it. And then I kind of surrendered and I said, but I don't know how, I don't know how to change this. And I really recommend that that's something that you do on your journey of consciousness on your conscious journey, if you will, on your path of personal growth and personal development is that you really be okay with not having the answer to the how. This is where a lot of people get really tripped up and then they sabotage all of their efforts. 
I'll give you an example. I had a friend call me yesterday and she and her husband had spent a day, the day before on the beach masterminding their future. These are two super bright, highly talented, very gifted individuals and struggling with unhappiness and lack of fulfillment. You know, struggling isn't always about struggling for money. It could be about struggling in terms of your joy, you know, wanting to have a more joyful life. So they came up with this really brilliant plan and both of them were like super passionate, really excited about it. And then the next day called me and shared it with me. And this, like as soon as she was on the finishing touches of sharing this magnificent vision, then she started to get all up in her head about it and sabotage that beautiful dream and that beautiful inspiration of what it is that they're supposed to be doing with their lives at this point by justifying and trying to make logic of everything. And, you know, now she was going to go online and she was going to look for properties, but the area she wants to have the property, she can't afford that area. And she just completely talked herself out of the vision, out of the dream. And nothing is more disheartening than when you do that to yourself. And I find as a coach over the years, that is probably one of the biggest hurdles that most people struggle with is they have these fantastic goals and these amazing dreams and then they talk themselves out of it because they come up with all of these obstacles and roadblocks and it's just basically overthinking it's like this mental loop that actually keeps you stuck so the process around that is, and I said this to her yesterday, number one, you're way overthinking this. And number two, let yourself be guided. But you see, that's probably one of the biggest pieces to being conscious, or shall I say the journey, the journey to consciousness. You know, I, I think that maybe we never completely get co completely like 100% conscious because we're always expanding. We're always seeking more. We're always evolving. So maybe this notion that consciousness is an evolution is really not accurate. Maybe it's a journey forever in the entire time we're here on the planet in this body. I can't really say for sure because I haven't come to the end yet. <laughs> so like you, I'm in the middle of my journey too. So I like to break down consciousness into four basic stages and they're big brush strokes, but it'll give you a sense of what to look for, what to notice. So you've heard me say a few times already, what step one is. So step one is where you don't know, you don't know. Now, if you don't know, you don't know something, then you're completely unconscious, right? You just can't even see it. Someone could give you the answer to something, but you wouldn't even be able to hear it. So this is an, a, an unconscious incompetence is where you don't know that you don't know. Now, in that place, you know, ignorance is bliss. So if you can remember back at a time in your life when you just didn't know better and you just did crazy things and you got away with it, stuff that you probably should have like maimed yourself or hurt yourself or died and you didn't. I mean, that's a perfect example of you don't know, you don't know. And so you just go about it and you don't think about consequences. You just go about things. Well, at that level, it's kind of a small life, you know, because you can't really determine how you got somewhere. So let's say you find something that really is producing these colossal results. And it could be in any area of your life, you know, relationships, health, money, whatever. 
doesn't matter. It could be any of the any of the areas of your life. The bottom line is is that you you've kind of hit like this flow, and you're creating all of these amazing results, but you don't know how you've done it, you don't know how you've got there, like you have no evidence procedure other than what's in front of you, so you can't really go back and track and say, hey, I can duplicate this, or, you know, if we just do more of this, or if we look at it this way, then we can create more of the same in this other area. But you're not really paying attention, you're just going about it. It's like the path of least resistance is the path you're on, and you have no real understanding of what that is. You're just going for it. So the next step of consciousness is where you know you don't know. Now this is always a fascinating level of awareness to be at. When you know you don't know, sometimes <laughs> life can be so frustrating because you know you don't know, but you don't really know how to find out. You don't really know where to get the answers or the information and you kind of feel stuck you know this was my friend that asked me if i put together um this video and talk about like how i figured myself out and how i got past all the old negative programming and limiting beliefs and limiting decisions and just low self-esteem you know and 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 low self-worth and just all that all that stuff that holds you back. So when you get to this place of where you know you don't know, suddenly everything changes and you start looking around you. Now this is a really good place for you to take stock of your life. And this is what I did. I came to this awareness. I actually moved. I moved across the country and I, I'm a big supporter of living in different countries and different cultures in your lifetime you know don't stay in the same spot forever because it's just a very small uh, feedback loop when you just stay in the same place forever travel move around meet new people try new cultures try new foods live in different environments experience different weather patterns you know have a bigger broader richer more deeper experience about life when i moved what happened was i i moved into a very broad and and big environment compared to what i had been living in i came i went from a farm to a major metropolis it was a culture shock and it was the best thing I could have done for myself because it gave me an awareness that I needed to be asking questions and finding out about the stuff I didn't know. Step two, take stock of your life. I bought a journal and I started writing out different categories in my life like finances, education, health, career path, enjoyment, awareness, fulfillment, I, I put all of these things into categories, into like a five section notebook, and then I just started taking stock of my life. You cannot change something you aren't aware of. You have to be aware of it in order to change it. So at that point then, all of these ideas started coming, drop my pen, all of these ideas started coming about what it was I wanted to experience in dead. So now I'm cultivating and I'm gathering information. I started taking more coursework. I went back to school. I, I went down a whole different path. I expanded my mind and it brought me to a place of knowing so much more about myself. My self-awareness went through the roof. And this is really the key, getting yourself to a place where you know yourself. You know, there's a difference between your emotion and, how, and your feelings. You know, our emotion is usually a reaction to an experience. Our feelings are our are, are radar. It's what we put out to assess 
a situation, people, circumstances, ideas, all of the different aspects of life experience that we have, we go through and we experience it through our feelings before we experience anywhere else. Trusting those feelings is definitely a raising of your consciousness. Now, that means you're not listening or following messages outside of yourself. You're not listening to others' opinions about what you should do with your life, and you're not listening to messages by the media, for example, by advertising, by movies and newscasts and television shows. That is not your frame of reference as to who you should be. You're listening to what's in your heart and you're going from that place. That's where your true feelings guide you forward in your life. And it's not to say that you won't have any kind of challenges because challenges are growth. Challenges are blessings. It's, it's a way of getting yourself to expand beyond your current frame of reference. The thing of it is, the matter of the whole point here is that you'll learn to trust you. You'll learn to get to a place within yourself where you understand the difference between external validation and self-referral. And once you get to that awareness of self-referral, you're not going to be dismayed or, or hindered or influenced by any outside entities or circumstances. And you'll gain this really high level of trust in life. You know, when you trust in yourself, you trust in life. When you trust life, you know that whatever comes across your path, A, you can handle it, because it wouldn't be on your path if you couldn't, and B, you created it because we create our entire reality through our vibration, which comes from our thoughts, which comes from our emotions. And C, it wouldn't be an experience that you're having and you wouldn't be able to handle it if you hadn't created it. So everything we do in life comes from within. We're living life through us, not what's happening to us. And this is probably the highest level of conscious awareness that you can get to. When you really bring yourself to this level of saying, everything is uh, turning out terribly and I created it all. You can conversely say, everything is turning out magnificently and I created it all. And that's really that's really consciousness. That's really taking consciousness to a very high level. And I know that you can do it. So that's how I broke free from a whole bunch of uh, lifetime of pain and suffering and struggle and um, just feeling abandoned, you know, by my family. And I broke free by moving myself to a completely different place and then taking stock of my life. Now, maybe moving to a completely different city or country isn't an option for you right now. So what could you do? Well, you could change things up in your home. You could get rid of stuff that makes you feel super comfortable. You could let go of some of your um, stuff that you insist on having, you know, clear the clutter, spring is coming, do a spring clean. You could write down all of the things that you would like to experience and then take the top six, you know, shortlist it or take the top three and you could make a step toward each one of those every single day. You know, when we move toward what it is that we want, it moves toward us. What you are seeking 
is seeking you. So every day, just even if it's a small phone call or email, or you do a little more research, or which is even more powerful, you visualize it and you get into the feeling of what it would be like to be in that position, to have that life, to have those experiences be in real time for you. So that is my first um, step for you on getting more conscious. And once you open up the door on this journey, it really comes on its own. You don't have to work at it. You just have to respond to it. I think that's really the key. You know, the path of least resistance behavior or living or approach to living your life is really not knowing what it is that you're doing. You're just, you're just doing it. You know, you're just following the path of least resistance. But there's one greater path that I would like to invite you to put yourself on, and that is the path of most allowing. So the path of most allowing is like a combination of the path of least resistance and being aware and self-aware as you make the decisions, make the choices, experience the emotions, think the thoughts, take the behavior, speak the words, you know, our word is our wand and you're speaking your reality into form. So be aware, be aware of what you think, be aware of how you trust your feelings, and be aware of the emotions that get triggered as you're going down the path of life. So there you have it. It's a good start. We'll go a little deeper in the next video. Thank you for being here and tuning in. And my name is Deborah Peters, and I look forward to seeing you real soon. Have a great night.